Hello and welcome to the Titus Time Out Podcast. I'm Jenny Abney Sivy, and today I'm going to do a demo of our Teams Displacement Ventilation Selection Program. So I've already launched Teams, so we're just going to click on Quick Select and it'll ask us what product we want to select. You can go in and start a new project and fill in all the information, but we're just going to do this quickly. We're going to do a displacement ventilation project, so I'll click DV. So we're in the process of integrating the displacement ventilation selection into the All Products Teams program. But for now, it tells me it's going to launch a separate program, so I'm just going to click Yes. And move this into frame a little bit. Okay, so again, we can enter all the job information, um, address, state, all of that, but let's go ahead and do quick select again. Now this opens up the selection screen. So you can start by putting in a room name. We're going to do a classroom. And then you can put in the description. We're going to say it's a 30 by 30 classroom with a 10 foot ceiling. And then you click resize room so it redraws your room down here below. Now there are two different methods you can calculate. You can use airflow based or load based. I actually have some numbers for the load of this space, so we're just going to do a load based calculation. So we have a space, we'll say there's 26 people in it at 250 BTU per person. So the occupant load is going to be 6,500 BTU. For equipment, we're going to have five computers and five monitors with 222 BTU for the computer and 102 for the monitor, plus a 200 watt projector. So if you add all that up, you get 2303 BTU equipment load. For overhead lighting, let's say that we have 2 watts per square foot. So when you do the math on that, you get 6143 BTU. And then for the wall and glass load, we're going to have 10.5 BTU per square foot on one of the walls. So when you add all that up, you get 3150 BTU. We'll leave the room temperature at 75. Okay, so on the selection side, I've told it to select between one and three diffusers. For device position, it's set for wall. You can select the device type, so you can have a semicircular, corner, or rectangular. Well, I'll leave that at all for right now. And for model, you can actually select the specific model you want, but I'm going to leave it everything set at all so that we can have a good comparison. And then over here, I tell it which wall I want to put it on, and now we're going to hit auto select. So it selected a lot of combinations that would work for me. It tells you the model, the inlet size, the unit size, what type it is, the throw, the airflow, the pressure drop, the NC level, and the percent comfort area. So if you recall from the What is Displacement Ventilation podcast, because your diffusers are in the occupied zone, there's an area around the diffuser called the adjacent zone where you should not place occupants. This area is the area where the airflow is 50 feet per minute or greater. The percent comfort area is the percent of the room that is outside of that adjacent zone. So in this case, it is 85% outside, the one below it 84, and so on. So let's double click on the first one and see how that one looks. So it opens it up on the device position tab. Let's move our diffusers, kind of centered on the wall here. And now we can click on the ISOVEL view and see where the adjacent zone is. So you can see here, this is the adjacent zone and we've got our end velocity set for 50 feet per minute. So this is the area that you don't want to put occupants in this space. So now let's go back to the auto select tab and pick a different one. Let's scroll down and find a corner diffuser. 
So here we have, we have two corner diffusers. Drag that one into the corner. This one's backwards, so we could just click Rotate Device and turn it till it's correct. And now look at the ISOVEL view here. So now you can see the air comes out in the corners like this. So maybe this is the one you decide you want. Maybe you're a picture teacher right here or something. So now you can actually look at this and see what your ISOVEL looks like at different end velocities. So as the air moves away from the diffuser, it'll slow down, and you can actually see that happen here by using the up and down arrows. So we're going to go down to 15 feet per minute now. So you can see the ISOVEL actually covers the space nicely, and somewhere around 17 feet per minute is where we cover the whole space. They do start overlapping, and that could cause some issues, but our displacement and ventilation diffusers have pattern controllers so you could adjust where the airflow goes so that you don't have them collide in the middle of the space. So by the time the supply air reaches 15 feet per minute, you want the room to be filled, and it shows it here, so that looks pretty good. So let's take our end velocity back to 50 feet per minute so that the results are calculated based on that number. Okay, so on this result side, you can see your total airflow. You can see the temperature differential of 3.6 degrees, and ASHRAE recommends that you don't have a temperature differential from the ankle to the neck region while seated of more than 3.6 degrees, so this is good. You can see the exhaust temperature, the floor temperature, the model of the unit we've selected, the NC of the space, the comfort area percentage, the inlet pressure, how big the adjacent zone is, and how many devices you have in the space. So let's say we like this one. We will click Save. Because I didn't start a project, I have to, it's telling me I have to start one now if I want to save it. So let's do that. We'll put in some information here. Just call it DV Test. Click Save. Get this on screen. And we can tag the first device. And so now you can see the room schedule and the device schedule. From here, you can click on Reports and run the room schedule. So from the report, you can print it, or up here with this little Save button, you can export to Excel or an Acrobat PDF. And you can also see a room device schedule. So now this gives you all the performance data we were just talking about, as well as the ISOVEL for the adjacent zone. So that's how you use the Teams Displacement Ventilation Selection software. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for taking the time out with us.